Dear students, in this section we are going to discuss one very important concept that is the application of Gauss law. Suppose we are having four point charges say Q1, Q2, Q3 and Q4. Here you can observe in this diagram the charges Q1, Q2 and Q3 are lying in a closed surface. This is the three dimensional closed surface and this charge Q4 is lying outside this surface. Okay. Suppose we are interested to calculate electric field at any point situated on this closed surface then what we do we use Gauss law and we know the mathematical form of the Gauss law it is straight the total flux associated with any closed surface equal to closed surface integral of E dot ds equal to Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught right. In this equation you can observe this term Q enclosed. Q enclosed is the net charge inside the surface and this surface is called the Gaussian surface. Okay. This term E vector. E vector represents the electric field at any point on the surface. Okay. And one thing very important to note down that E vector is the total field and may have contribution from charges inside as well as outside the surface. That means in this diagram you can say the net electric field at any point situated on this closed surface will have the contribution of Q1, Q2, Q3 as well as Q4. Okay. Now let us move to few illustrations and through coming illustration we will learn the application of this Gauss law. So let us move to illustration number 1. In this illustration it is given electric field vector alpha dx d plus xi cap plus E naught j cap newton per coulomb where alpha this constant equal to 1 newton per coulomb hypothetical closed surface is taken as shown in the figure. You can observe this is the hypothetical closed surface. You can say this is a Gaussian surface. Okay. Find the total charge enclosed within this closed surface. You can observe here this field is having the combination of uniform field as well as non-uniform electric field. X component is non-uniform and Y component is uniform. If this electric field would have been uniform, the net charge enclosed by this closed surface would have been zero. But there is non-uniform electric field also that means that there will be no total charges enclosed by the closed surface. So let us analyze how to calculate the total charge enclosed by this closed surface. Okay. So let us write the electric field vector this one this is the electric field vector and we know the alpha equal to 1 Newton per coulomb. Okay. As we discuss one component that is the y component of electric field is uniform. That means there is no contribution of net flux to this component. Because of this component there will not be any contribution to the flux to this closed surface. Okay. So we need not to care about this y component. But electric field as we discuss it is non-uniform in the x direction that means the component of this field will contribute to the net flux. Now let us move to calculate the x component. We need not to calculate for the y component. We will calculate the contribution of the x component. So let us calculate the flux due to the x component. So let us make the diagram again. Okay. First we will consider the flux passing through this surface. Okay, this surface. Say this surface is surface number 1. Okay, here you can observe the electric field lines are coming toward the surface. If electric field are coming toward any surface, the flux is called the incoming flux and that flux should be with the negative sign. Right. So also, you can observe here at this surface because this is nothing but yz plane and here x equal to 0 that means the electric field 
that is E x magnitude should be equal to D okay, because x equal to 0 here and as we discuss electric field lines of force are towards surface number 1 that means this is the incoming flux and this flux should be negative and we can we can observe here the area vector between the angle between the area vector and electric field vector is 180 degree that means the flux associated with this surface should be equal to e x multiplied by area multiplied by cos 180 degree and cos 180 degree equal to minus 1 that means phi 1 equal to minus e x multiplied by a multiplied by c a multiplied by c is the area okay so this is the flux and phi 1 e x equal to d so let us substitute the value of e x and now we got the value of phi 1 and phi 1 equal to minus a c d let this equation number 1 so we cal we have calculated the flux associated with this surface okay now let us calculate flux through this inclined surface okay so let us make the diagram okay if electric field would have been uniform then the flux passing through this rectangle surface magnitude of the flux passing through this rectangular surface should be same as flux coming through this inclined surface but electric field is changing with the x direction that means the magnitude of flux passing through this rectangular surface will not be same in this inclined surface okay so we need to calculate the flux through second surface okay and here we cannot directly calculate the flux by multiplying electric field and area vector why because electric field having the variation along the x direction for this purpose what we need to do we need to take one elemental strip on the inclined plane here so let us take one incline one strip on the inclined plane let the distance of this strip from this end is l and the thickness of the strip is dl okay the area vector of this strip will be perpendicular to the inclined surface and electric field is along the x direction so let us for the better picture let us make this situation in the two dimensional scenario so let us observe from the z axis so we will observe this triangle and the strip will be like this okay the distance of a strip from this end is L and the thickness of a strip is DL and inside dimension here is C okay the area vector of a strip will be perpendicular to the strip like this this is the area vector and electric field is along the x direction that means in the horizontal direction and we know this angle is theta that means this angle is theta and this will be 90 minus theta okay the electric field is having variation along the x direction so here we can write d phi 2 because we have calculated the flux phi 1 so let us write d phi 2 is the flux passing through this strip d phi 2 will be equal to e x multiplied by area of this elemental strip that is equal to c multiplied by dl multiplied by cos 90 minus theta so flux through this strip will be this one okay here you can observe this is having the very this term is having the variation along the x direction and here we have the term dl that means we need to change this dl into dx so let us write this expression again let us do one thing let us write dl in term of dx and dy that means we can make the diagram like this this is dx and this is dy and this angle the inclination of this strip with the horizontal is theta that means we can write this term dl now dl will be equal to dx divided by cos theta so we got the value of dl and value of e x equal to d plus x so here we can write d plus x in place of e x and this term is sin theta so this is now the final term now we can rearrange again because sin theta divided by cos theta is equal to tan theta so finally we can write c multiplied by d 
tan theta dx plus here x multiplied by c multiplied by tan theta multiplied by dx this one let this equation number 3. Now total flux, total flux is the integration of d phi 2. So we need to make the integration of this. So let us write this integration. Okay. So let us do one thing. Let us write this expression to the next phase. This one. This is very simple integral. You can observe the integration of d x equal to x and limit is zero to b. And here the integration is x square divided by two. Okay. So this is the final expression after placing the limit because it's a very simple one. Now we can write phi two equal to c d a plus a b c divided by two. Let this equation number four. Okay. Now we got the value of phi one. Phi one is the flux associated with this surface, and phi two is the flux associated with this surface. Okay. So total flux through this. Gaussian surface, three dimensional Gaussian surface, the summation of these two fluxes. This is the incoming flux, this is the outgoing flux. So, this is the total flux. Now, you can observe this term and this term will get cancelled. So, total flux equal to ABC divided by 2. Okay. Now, let us apply Gauss theorem. According to Gauss theorem, total flux equal to closed surface integral E dot dA Q enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Okay. Here we will use this term and this term because we know we need to calculate the E Q enclosed and we have calculated this value. So, this value is A B C divided by 2 and we need to calculate this value. So, this is the final expression. Now, we can write Q enclosed equal to epsilon naught A B C divided by 2. This is the total charge enclosed in, in this imaginary surface. Okay? Dear aspirants, Sengage India has launched the new edition of our J Advanced Physics books. Please visit www.sengage.co.in to buy a copy. You can also buy the books from Amazon or Flipkart.